Ah, welcome back my gardening friends to another cloudy wet day uh, these are my square foot gardening been uh, reasonably uh, successful learned a lot of things what not to and what to plant and today's episode we're going to be looking at the raised beds especially the permanent beds of the bean family these are all new this year a little bit of slug defense there we're trying that out and uh, later on we're going to be looking at the grapevine pruning so if you want to bear with me or just flick along it's up to you these are my permanent beds uh, people have asked me why I've left these posts in mainly because I wasn't sure whether I was going to use nets or not and with all the new bugs we've got with the carrots and everything else uh, I am going to be uh, removing these now and I'll be building special cages for future videos so in amongst this lot how well how do we actually feed these beds while everything's growing well I've incorporated the underground worm farms now it's just getting a little bit low I built all this out of recyclable materials hooks are on there bits of wood are on the bottom to hold it together and it's uh, that's all broken down uh, really well so the worms come in and out of these holes this is dropped right down there so we need to get away well is that that's a tea bag I'll be showing you something in a minute with the tea leaves no good leaving that in there because it just takes absolutely years to uh, break down I'll uh, put that in my pocket you watch I'll end up eating that later with a one of the beans peas sorry so I'm going to feed these the worms now these are new beds so they're all layered I'll try and put a video in uh, in a card there or at the end of how I filled these beds there's videos on how I built them so by feeding the worms in the underground worm farms it keeps them happy happy worms happy garden and everything grows really well it's all right putting the ingredients in different layers all the way down but it's getting material we can put stuff on the top at the end and the worms will pull it down but while we've got everything growing we're limited so those underground worm farms are absolutely ideal and in my playlist there is a few videos on underground worm farms we'll just take a, a quick look at everything that's going on these are some of the giant onions apparently this one's got a virus and uh, I love my carrots and uh, we've got something going wrong with them this year so I'm going to be fully netting those with EnviroMesh the old parsnips are doing well so let's pop across and show you my uh, worm recipe so this uh, this is plot one we've already just been on the uh, plot uh, three and uh, if you like what you see at the moment then uh, why not uh, consider subscribing it doesn't cost anything if not just happily view hashtag sunflower challenge come on my beauty all the way to the top of that pole look at that sky guys i'm gonna get wet we love nature here gardening on a budget so all our kitchen waste vegetable waste that is goes into the bucket I normally sort it and take the banana skins out because up there I've got my banana runoff uh, banana concentrate and I do all my own plant foods uh, there's the uh, comfrey nettle perennial weeds nettles etc there's my comfrey plant so everything goes into the bucket and uh, I'll bring it up to the allotment and end up putting it uh, into uh, the compost bin now you remember we had trouble with the mice 
you know, I can see it but you might not be able to. So I put that in, now stop. Uh, but unfortunately, they found my Christmas potatoes and I've only got one left out of all those. Um, be another video soon, uh, how I grow potatoes throughout the year, all year round, straight out of a bucket or the ground. So don't forget, click that bell if you decide to consider subscribing. So I'll just show you now, that's that. Uh, we'll be uh, chopping that up shortly. But what do I add? Uh, blended eggshells, uh, really blended up well. These aren't 100%, but they're, they're good enough. Uh, enough for the worms to help digest the food. Uh, we've got coffee grounds there, dried. Uh, log ashes, uh, chainsaw log ashes. And then we have, uh, again, these are the tea leaves. So I'll take them out of the bags. Yeah, I know I'm sad, but look at all that. A great addition uh, to uh, any compost uh, bin without the actual plastic bag that uh, normally surrounds them. So, yeah, this is one of my little tips for hashtag uh, shed wards. I'm on team over the pond. Um, worms are good, but we can help them by uh, making sure we cut this up as small as we can. Now, there's some eggshells in there. We're going to have to see if the wife will kindly put them separately. I'm just going to finish that off. Now, doesn't that look appetising? It's lovely stuff. But, like all food, we, we need to give it a bit of a dressing. So, I always put um, a handful of uh, the log shavings in. That just helps soak some of the moisture up. Little sprinkle of coffee grounds. I do it so the worms enjoy the coffee. I don't enjoy it because I like to get rid of it. A good amount of blended eggshells and uh, a nice little handful. Of tea leaves. Now, ain't that looking better? Now, if you was a worm, you'd really enjoy that. But you can see now the eggshells are getting in there. You can still see them. Remember to get right to the bottom. I wouldn't want to be the worm that ended up having everything if I hadn't got the last little bit mixed in right. There is a bit of orange peel in there. I do tell Mrs. King, but she just gives me that look. So I'll just uh, carry on. So look at that. They're going to uh, enjoy that immensely. There's all sorts in there. But that's uh, my little mix. Uh, if it was going in the compost bin, there is a few other things that I would add to it and more of. But because it's going in the underground worm farm, that'll be, they'll love that. And they'll drag all that right down into the bottom of the beds. And realistically, it's composting in 24 hours. They'll eat it and it'll come out the other end, either wheat or poo, and they'll spread it all over your, the base of the beds, depending if they're lazy or quick worms uh, running around. And uh, there's three worm, there's three stations in each bed. So what I normally do is say, feed the middle one. Worms are sniffing out and travel. Put some more in the other. While they're traveling across to the next worm farm, hopefully they'll be in poo in the middle. Hopefully. So we're back on the far bed and don't need a great deal in there. I think this will be enough to do three. So I'm going to do the two outside ones. And uh, within a week or two, I'll be able to do the next one. And as I said, they'll just travel about. I'm hoping to do this to most of the beds. I've got uh, some underground worm farms for children as well. And I might incorporate those into the square foot gardening beds, but my intention with those are to take out 12 inches of soil anyway. And 
use them as uh, coal frames so they're, they're lined at the top for anybody that doesn't these are just slats and they they just uh, lift out they just cut to size if i take 12 inches out and then next year i can top up with the manure at the bottom and uh, with some of my homemade compost mixes and we can start fresh again with all nice uh, new bits so that's how I feed my permanent beds during the growing season. It isn't hard and the worms do enjoy it. It's all right feeding the worms at the end of the season by putting your manure on the top or whatever, but I find this uh, the best way. It's uh, tried, tested and uh, proven. And if you Google underground worm farms, mine is the first video you will see. So in my last video, we did show you the grapevine. Now that looks absolute like we've actually decimated it, but you need to get it all tidy. More light within the, uh, the greenhouse now uh, for all the plants that are living off the gravity fed rainwater guttering wick system. And as you can see, they're all doing well. This is the pomegranate if it doesn't fruit flower this time I'm going to prune it at the bottom but now we can see the grapes the grapes need sunshine see the outside ones aren't doing as well as the inside so successional but I'm still thinking about taking it out he says so basically here we have the main one and what we're looking for uh, is uh, one and two possibly we go to the nearest grape so we might be able to see it a little bit better on this one so we've got one two we're on the whoops third knuckle and there's the bunch of grapes so we get rid of that uh, it doesn't hurt it we just leave enough enough leaves on to uh, keep it happy this was all on the floor because it was far too heavy so it's had a at one end and now we can see everything i've trimmed all the bottom out and even when we haven't got anything uh, fruiting uh, we've gone uh, there's the one that comes out of the old branch so there's one and two uh, we'll get new shoots here next year and then we we'll might end up with some grapes off those but just on this one vine you can see and these will be thinned out 50% at least and we'll take out um, the weakest. That looks like a nice one. And we may take out something that looks like that that's uh, not as good. I've done the same for that one. All round. So now when I'm sitting here looking out at my sunflowers and my wildflower wildlife garden, uh, I'll be able to reach up and uh, pull me a grip. So that's how I prune them. Uh, there's other videos elsewhere that uh, other people do things differently, but that way suits the uh, grapes that I've grown. And if you make a mistake, you won't get the fruits. So we've got lots of fruits again. I'll be doing um, a giant vegetable tour. That's my uh, cabbage and every time i do tend to show it and it's uh, looking uh, very good this has got till uh, the end of september to put on the uh, the main the main growth it's been a good year for fruit up to yet these are the uh, blackberries and uh, no, just tilt it a little bit and if it pops off we can have it it's not quite ready yet but you can see what happens uh, if you leave them that bit longer any grubs in there you know, close our eyes guys if you don't see the grub it won't hurt us excuse me oh nice sorry Oh, that was a bit tarty. Yeah, they don't look much, but they taste really nice. No, 
I told you a lie the other day, didn't I? I said these weren't doing any good. These are the autumn fruit in that I didn't cut back to the ground. And uh, Mrs. K spotted some of these the other day and uh, took them. Um, I will cut them down because these fruits aren't as good as what uh, these will be here. And you can see them flowering now. It won't be long before we get something. But uh, still tasty. And the bees in the middle of the screen there are absolutely loving the nectar. Even though we haven't had any uh, decent sunshine uh, for quite a while, uh, the uh, the blueberries uh, are, are coming now. Uh, just need a little bit longer. So I keep telling the wife. Uh, I took quite a few of the black currants off. I sent those to one of my friends at work and he's made a jar of jam. But I did send him some white currants because he said he'd never seen white currants before. Look at the red currants, even though they're, they're coming on really well now. He'd never seen uh, white currants before. And as you can see now, this stem's uh, been completely cleared. And uh, I am going to save uh, some seed, but uh, I'm going to look for the, uh, the best ones. Oh, it's come off in my hand. Oh dear, I mustn't waste it. Um, these are the two cuttings we took and we just pushed them into the ground they seem quite firm now these are the black currants remember the ones that dropped on the floor self seeded started to grow and I potted that one up and that one there and uh, I'm just ensuring that there is no nothing growing on there so uh, it puts all its energy into the roots and there's uh, a baby uh, black currant plant surprising these keep dropping off uh, as soon as uh, got another one there I'm not wasting it it's going sorry guys weed as we go there's another one that's what I potted up that's what we've got this year so they dropped down on 2018 2019 I potted them up and uh, they went in the ground 2020 these red currants are very slow and we was right the uh, baby uh, the uh, baby ladybirds they're probably not called ladybirds have then gone into their whatever they go into I don't know the words for it and uh, they've disappeared now and uh, you can see oh there, that might be a, a new one and very delicate I tried to touch, touch in one and uh, it fell apart sorry they're, they're all over the place done a real good job this is all aphid damage and uh, they've been busy and hopefully i'll get a, a, a decent crop but yeah they're uh, absolutely everywhere the gooseberries are ready goose gogs uh, i've just been taking one or two because they're not 100 percent somebody did tell me what this was uh, one year I can't remember. Uh, not too fussed, excuse me. But even the ones that got bashed. Need to take those off. They got damaged. Oh, mustn't waste those. Can't do it one handed, but I'll take those with me. But the blueberries, they don't grow very quickly. But uh, in the future, and these plants are twice the size i'll get twice the crop i'll just pop that between my legs oh it's got thorns Ooh. there we go don't waste nothing here when you garden on a budget this is my uh, compost bin this is the cocoa koi i'll get um what gets fly tipped oh we've got something growing in there guys i hope it's a tomato plant but this is what the cannabis growers uh, dump unscrupulously and uh, the other bay has started to fill up can't see it properly started to fill up from that big pile that uh, we found so the uh, grapes in here are, these are a black grape the others that you saw are um, a, a green very small very tightly packed but uh, you might be able to make out now uh, oh hello uh, these grapes and again I know you can't see them properly but 
these will be thinned out by 50%. We'll be taking the little ones off. It seems a shame, but it needs to be done. These are the shop bought cherries. Uh, three years now I've been planting them over the winter. They're looking good. And uh, this is one of the plants that we don't know the variety of. This is my first tomato of the season. And you know what's coming guys. Yes, excuse me. Oh. It's like that first taste of um, a cucumber. I'll pick the cucumbers very small. I don't let them get to full size. Uh, I think I'm a bit crowded in here, but you know that I'm going to be raising the poly polytunnel over the winter. So I've got more space. These are the courgette zucchini. That's the size I pick them at. Why is that? Excuse me. Exactly the right size for my lunchbox. So much tastier. Oh, I'm getting stuck, guys. Hang on. Let's, let's go for it. Come on. Ooh, uh, ooh. So much tastier when they're very young. So this is my solar panel. And that works everything on the allotment for pumping the water around. This is the gravity system for the uh, giant veg, the long veg, four meter guttering. Polytunnel's coming up a, a meter. Pallet collars are going to come down here and across there. That one's going to come down two more. That one's going to come another one. Just need some more pallet collars. But what a transformation from 12 months ago. I've worked damn hard a few hours a day when I can make it and when Mrs. K lets me. And there we have I plot one and that's be my display of uh, sunflowers for the hashtag, hashtag sunflower challenge. There's my leaf mold collecting base. So if you've liked the content of this video or what could be, my playlists are absolutely full of everything. Each month uh, there's a playlist, so uh, June 2018, June 2020, uh, you can find it all there. So don't be shy guys, have a little look. Happy gardening to you all. Till next time my friends. Uh, ta for now.